Someday, in the not so distant future, it happens. The moment you realize you're ready for anything. Get a degree in emergency management from Jacksonville State University and be ready for where you're going. I'm James Spann. This is the morning edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday, June 2nd. We are into meteorological summer. How about that? Muggy air stays in place across the state today. Let's get in there and take a look. First off, the water vapor satellite view around the nation. That old pesky upper low that's been west of the state has been drifting to the south, and it's currently south of the Louisiana Gulf Coast and the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. So we've still got this weakness here with colder air aloft, and again, I think we'll see more scattered storms today. The core of the jet, of course, is way north of here, which is what you expect in the summertime. Up north, we have flash flood watches near the Canadian border in a couple of spots, and out west, some wildfire dangers, and looks like the first excessive heat warning of the season for the Arizona deserts, including Phoenix. They'll see highs uh, perhaps over 105 today. Convective outlooks, no formal risk today. Just a big 5% zone from Tulsa up to the Great Lakes. Tomorrow, though, could be a pretty significant severe weather setup. You can see that moderate risk for parts of Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, and Illinois. The standard slight risk surrounding that. And on day three, a risk of severe weather from near St. Louis over to Evansville, Cincinnati, much of West Virginia, and Pittsburgh. And there could be a few... Uh, Tornadoes possibly in both of those zones today and tomorrow. So for our friends up there, they'll be watching that. Of course, down here, uh, you know, the pulse-type afternoon storms, and they can be strong from time to time, but the organized severe weather threats stay well to the north. This is the rain for the next five days. This carries us through Saturday morning at 7 o'clock. And it's got rain amounts of a quarter to one-half inch here, and we all know you can pick that up in 10 minutes in an afternoon storm. The amounts will vary greatly from one side of town to the next, the, the bigger organized numbers will be north of here. And hey, it's hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin. It kicked off yesterday. And the circle guys at NHC are back, and they've got a circle down in the southwestern Gulf, and uh, the models continue to try and develop something down there. But here's the problem. The, the seawater temperatures are very cool in the, uh, in the Gulf. You can see the northern Gulf uh, well below 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're just not going to see a lot of tropical action with anything like that, at least around here. So we're not overly concerned about that. Let's take a look at modeling. This is the GFS, the Global Forecast System, valid today at 1 o'clock local time. This is at 500 millibars. You can see that weakness in the upper high through here. You've got a core of the upper high over Old Mexico and off the Atlantic coast. But really, I don't think the weather changes much today, although... Uh, the models look a little drier. This is the GFS at 1 o'clock, and it looks pretty dry. This is the high-res NAM at 4 o'clock, and doesn't show a lot out there. But I think uh, with high dew points and that weakness, we'll see more scattered showers and storms today. The better chance coming after 1 or 2 o'clock like recent days. And no, it's not going to rain everywhere, but some spots could see a heavy downpour. You know that routine. We've been kind of trapped in that for a while. And this is tomorrow, and again, a pretty good moisture axis stays in place. We note west of here that deepening surface low under 1,000 millibars around Goodland, Kansas. And uh, that's the concern for that severe weather out across the heartland where a few tornadoes are possible, if not likely. And for us, this is the high-res name at 4 o'clock tomorrow. It doesn't show a lot, but again, I think clearly we'll have scattered showers and storms out there and trying to tell you now exactly when and where it's going to rain. Even today, it's just impossible to do. Just be aware of the possibility. Now, this is Wednesday. The upper high begins to uh, nose in from the west, and we're thinking showers should thin out a good bit. In fact, both models look fairly dry. The NAM and the GFS uh, printing pops under 10% on Wednesday, so uh, most locations dry. Still, you can't rule out the chance of a shower somewhere. I'd say the high would be in the upper 80s. Thursday, a surface boundary uh, comes in here from the north. You can see that might set up an enhanced chance of showers and storms for the Tennessee Valley, uh, say from Cullman North. The southern two-thirds of the state look relatively dry. And this is Friday. That surface boundary just kind of sags in here and stalls out. We are famous for being a 
cold front graveyard this time of the year. So uh, that uh, front could be in the process of fizzling Friday. But again, that might bring us a higher coverage of showers and storms in the afternoon. All right, weekend fans, let's take a look. This is Saturday. Got an upper trough on the East Coast. We've still got the upper high west of the state. That surface boundary is stalled out and in the process of dissipating. And a new surface low forms out there across the uh, western plains over Kansas. And that looks very typical. You know, partly sunny, a few scattered showers and storms. Uh, Better chance afternoon and evening. Sunday, pretty much the same thing. This is suggesting the deeper moisture over the eastern half of the state, but there is no way now you can resolve a moisture axis in the summer that far in advance. And a week from today, a new cold front approaches the north, and that might give us a little bump in the number of showers and storms. But the better dynamics way north of here, and more than likely that front will not make it through. If you're looking for a drier air mass with low dew points, that might happen in September. Uh Uh-huh. And down to the south, yes, we see the old GFS with the tropical mischief down there. Go out there three more days. This is June 12th. It's got a weak surface low near Tampa Bay. And, you know, the models have suggested this for weeks. But, again, as we showed you with those cooler sea surface temperatures down there, we're just not overly concerned. This will be a super big deal. But, as always, it's something to watch. Even broad uh, surface tropical lows in the Gulf can bring heavy rain to parts of the coastal region. But it looks like that will not affect us. Here's the end of the forecast, June the 17th. Core the jet stream is up on the Canadian border. Down here, the winds aloft are light and variable, and that looks very typical with uh, warm, muggy conditions, some risk of scattered showers and storms. Here's a look at the 15-day temperatures off the GFS Ensemble, and uh, interesting to note that it keeps us under 90 for the next 15 days. And, hey, we'll take that. Of course, you know, there's very little skill beyond seven days. We all know that. Again, we're just looking for trends, but no sign of any death ridge, super upper high taking over here, and that's a good thing. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes in the blog next video here by 4 o'clock today. If you can't catch us this evening on ABC 3340 News, the live stream of the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless.